Just because you don't take insurance doesn't mean your clients can't use it. Mentaya is an out-of-network billing platform that gets clients to get back 70% back on therapy without the therapist lifting a finger. I've checked out their product, and it's truly a game changer. It's what I wish I had in my private pay practice. They handle literally everything, so you can focus on what matters, therapy. Go to practiceofthepractice.com forward slash Mentaya to try it out for free. Again, that's practiceofthepractice.com forward slash M-E-N-T-A-Y-A to get started for free. Mentaya is amazing if you have private pay clients that want to bill their insurance. This is the Practice of the Practice podcast with Joe Sanox, session number 963. Hello, hello. I am Joe Sanok, your host, and welcome to the Practice of the Practice podcast. We are in the middle of Level Up Week right now. This week, uh, we are going to be doing tons of webinars. I think we have 15 scheduled at the time of this recording, uh, Monday through Thursday. So if you missed yesterday, uh, make sure you grab those recordings. Uh, if you sign up over at practiceofthepractice.com forward slash level up, uh, that's going to be where you can get access to those recordings if you're registered. Um, those are going to be available for a week afterwards, and then all of our membership communities get access to those indefinitely in our membership communities. And just a reminder, next week, memberships open for next level practice if you're starting a solo practice, group practice launch if you're moving from solo into group, and group practice boss if you already are a group practice owner. So all of those memberships, all those details over at practiceofthepractice.com forward slash level up. You are not going to want to miss this. Membership only opens a couple times a year, and the results are just insane. If you followed us back in December and January, you probably listened through our seven-figure practice series. And so many of those seven figure practice owners, those million dollar plus practices started in next level practice. They started their practices with us at Practice the Practice. And so the more that you can be around a community of people that can encourage you, can help you think differently, can just, just understand all the opportunities out there that we just don't normally hear about, it helps you level up faster. It helps you help more people in the mental health space. It helps you be able to affect your communities. And that's why I am so excited today uh, for our guest. I have Iggy Fanlow. Iggy is the founder of Cloud Med Spa and a dedicated entrepreneur on a mission to transform the journey of aesthetic entrepreneurs. Boasting an impressive background, Iggy draws from over 15 years of experience within the corridors of prestigious financial giants, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, where he spent eight years as managing director and partner. This rich financial expertise is complemented by an additional quarter century immersed in the dynamic realm of technology and medical startups. Iggy, welcome to the Practice of the Practice podcast. Joe, it's great to be here. Thanks for including me. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited about this conversation. Um, before we started rolling, we were talking about the shift into more of a rental economy and just these big picture things. But before we get into some of those topics that we're going to discuss, I'd love to just hear a little bit about how'd you get into this space, into you're doing these podcast interviews. How'd you land here? Yeah, it's it's a quirky story. So uh, I was living in uh, Silicon Valley area, actually Mill Valley in Marin. And we uh, a bunch of families, we used to always get together for the Super Bowl and for the Academy Awards. And at the Academy Awards that year, I think it was the 75th or 85th anniversary. Anyway, during the show, they were show clips of the of Academy Awards from 25 years ago, 50 years ago, 75 years ago, and so on and so forth. And people watching were, you know, were making comments that were quite you know, obvious, you know, the hair, the teeth, the skin, the nose, the face, the ears, everything um, had was so drastically changed. You could just sort of almost see the change in what was uh, Hollywood elite in terms of facial and personal aesthetics. And it was it just jumped off the page. They even brought in. Um, I think it was Beckham at the end, the first metrosexual, and he was, you know, shaved his chest and completely cut and perfect hair and perfect teeth. And, 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 and it just struck me. I was like, oh, my God, there's this one way street of aesthetics. 
And then literally in the corner of the room, I saw a couple teenagers taking selfies. And I went, oh, my God, it's just going to get worse. No, worse, that's a strong word. It's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger because the amount of self-analysis of your body, your face is just going up and younger. Um, so I just started digging in and that's where I sort of started doing the research and into hair, into teeth, into aesthetics. And I saw this crazy stat, and this is from 2018. And it said that 91% of the physical locations, this is a Bureau of Labor Statistics that did hair care were, had no W-2 employees. So they were strictly rent a chair. And I was like, wow, I'd heard of that concept. I certainly knew it was a common thing, but I had no idea it was that prevalent. More than 90% of the locations. And so I just had to dig in there. I said, look, there's something cooking here. And what I came to find after more sort of street research and talking to people was that it it all was a, a, a byproduct of the customer uh, practitioner relationship. So what and, and then if you tell people, you mention people, they immediately go, yeah, I know that. That's exactly the way it works. Where people said, I have a stylist and I love him or her and I go to him or her no matter where they are. If they move places, they move across town, maybe not across the country, but there were some crazy stories about 100 miles away and such. Anyway, the net of it is I understood now why salons had moved, changed their business model. They had a terrible business model. They had a model where they were paying for the customer acquisition. They were doing the marketing, the high rent, and they were attracting clients. But at the end of the day, they weren't their clients. It was the clients of the practitioner. And so they changed their business model and said, you know what? We're just going to rent chairs. And now everybody wins and we align everybody's interests. So I started digging this. this there's got to be similar industries where this has maybe not yet happened. And where I landed was... Um, was medical aesthetics. And it was the same thing. If you go and get a neurotoxin injection or fillers or lasers with a technician, if you're a regular user, and there's quite a few of them, there's millions of them, um, they tend to have a favorite injector. It's, it's a similar kind of you know, user experience. Maybe it's not quite as frequent, but you do do it three, four, five, six times a year, and you're having this literally face-to-face -face conversation with your practitioner as a client, and you're talking about your family and your vacations and the graduations and the funerals, and you develop this very tight relationship. And as long as what I'd say is there's solid uh, outcomes and solid results, they don't have to be Hollywood quality, but solid, and you have a strong relationship, you're going to keep that relationship. So I said, let's create a business model where we can uh, if you will, take the solo salon suites, my salon suites, but add it to medical aesthetics. And so that's what started the journey of let's create a rent a chair at a very high level, rent a chair model for medical aesthetics. Mm. Now, I want to definitely get into that model. Uh, but where do you see this rental economy going? Because I just saw this stat recently where they were looking at um, over the last, I think, 50 years, um, county by county, was it smarter to buy a house or rent a house? And um, they had it color coded where it was you know, like dark red if it was one or dark blue if it was the other. So it was very easy to tell the shift. And it was a video that kind of transitioned over time where right now, statistically, it's better to rent than it is to, to buy a house um, because the housing market's so high, post-pandemic, all sorts of various reasons. And that you know, even if I look at when I entered the work economy in my 20s, right after grad school in 2004, as a percentage of income, you know, I bought a house as a foster care supervisor making 40 grand a year. When I look at other people that are even making 60 or 80 a year, it's near impossible for them, at least in my area, to, to buy a house. Um, and if they do, it's such a large percentage of income, um, oftentimes a 30-year mortgage without 20% down, all these things. It's not just houses, too, as you and I were talking. Talk yeah. a little bit about what you're seeing in regards to just the rental yeah. economy of, of where you see society headed. Yeah, well, you're right about you should rent now. Uh, and there's simple formulas for that, but I won't go into it. Right now, I just think that the entire world, I mean, you could call it financing the financialization of stuff, but you see it today with Airbnb. People can rent 
an apartment, rent a house, rent a vacation spot for for homes. With Turo and Kite, you can just rent a car. You can use it for the day. You can use it for the week. You can even do longer term leases and you can do one nearby, drop it where you want. I mean, that's a much better convenient extension of rental cars. Um, there's uh, with cloud kitchens, you can rent a kitchen now uh, as a restaurateur. You just take a slot. You say, I'm the lunch slot or I'm the dinner slot or the breakfast slot. And they have created these these kitchens uh, with solo salon suites. You can rent the suite. So this 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 capability of like, I want to have my own situation. You can also argue Uber and DoorDash for the drivers is just too. I want to have control of the outcomes. I want to have uh, independence and flexibility as both a consumer and as a employee. And these are the trends, and it's kind of back to the future, if you will, the butcher, baker, candlestick maker, that you don't need to be part of a larger organization. You can be in the gig economy, you can rent in the gig economy, and it's a much more transaction related. And it's instead of saying, I have to invest all this capital into a home, into buying a car, into buying a boat, Freedom Boat Company, Freedom Boat is another one where you can rent and be part of a group. These are all things that, to me, make more financial sense, especially with assets that require lots of upkeep, including homes. Yeah. So, so when when I talk to specifically millennials who entered the entered the market, uh, left you know college in two thousand eight when you know the worst economy for most people coming out of college. Yeah. You know, a lot of millennials that I talk to are like, "There's no way I'm gonna." you know, have it as well as my boomer parents. Um, how do you think through, you know, specifically if it's a rental economy and there's not as much ownership, how someone can get ahead in that situation, um, knowing that things have shifted and, and will continue to shift in such a pronounced way? Well, the way I think you can get ahead is by, uh, by le- leveraging this rental economy as a owner. So instead of saying, okay, in your example, a therapist, a practice owner, in our example, it's medical aesthetics. But we, by the way, in our model, Cloud Med Spa, we have plastic surgeons, nurses, dentists, physical therapists, all using our model to rent out their space. So if you're an owner or you want to be an owner, instead of saying, hey, I'm going to save up, save up, save up, and prices are so high, it's crazy, it's going to take me 10 years to be able to afford my own place, I think the better thing is to say, how do I leverage this rental economy for my outcome? So I do want to have my place, and I'm willing to work there, but if I have two or three rooms, I don't need to hire employees, and that's another expense. I need to say, hey, let me use a platform like Cloud Med Spas to let other gig economy workers or other independent entrepreneurs run their business, rent out a room. We do it by the hour, which allows much higher utilization, many more people filling it out. And then if you're smart enough or you know you have been able to build out a very larger space or several smaller ones, now all of a sudden you can tap into private equity and sell your business because now you have a diversified revenue stream. I'm not one practice owner with six employees, you know, using five rooms. Hopefully that's where you end up. I'm now one practice owner with five rooms, but 50 to 100 people renting those rooms. Now I have a very diversified, stable revenue stream. Private equity is interested in that asset to sell your business. And that's that's how you can take advantage of it. I think leveraging these tools and say, I need to just get my foot in the door. And yeah, the asset's expensive, but I don't have to take care of the whole asset. I can defray all those overheads by releasing some pieces of that. And our platform, Cloud Med Spa, allows you to do that. Uh, in aesthetics, which is the highest margin business of all the practices I've seen. Hmm. (laughs) 
As a therapist, I can tell you from experience that having the right EHR is an absolute lifeline. I recommend using Therapy Notes. They make billing, scheduling, note taking, telehealth, and e prescribe incredibly easy. Best of all, they offer live telephone support that's available seven days a week. You don't have to take my word for it. Do your own research and see for yourself. Therapy Notes is the number one highest rated EHR system available today with a 4.9 out of five stars on trustpilot.com and on Google. All you have to do is click the link below or type promo code Joe on their website over at therapynotes.com and receive a special two month trial absolutely free. Again, that's therapynotes.com and use promo code Joe on the website. If you're coming from another EHR, Therapy Notes will also import your demographic data quick and easy at no cost, so you can get started right away. Trust me, don't waste any more of your time and try Therapy Notes. Just use promo code Joe at checkout. Now, how do you think that's going to affect, you know, as people start to do their own financial planning for their businesses? Um how much they need to be thinking through additional streams of income beyond just uh, what their practice is offering. Well, this, this is, I mean, I guess I'm repeating myself a little bit, but I, I think it's, it says, it says to them, Hey, I, I, I'm going to re- go rent. I'm going to go lease a space. Let me just put it down in real numbers. And the, the lease cost is a few thousand dollars. And they're like, okay, I got to go do this many procedures, this many clients. I also have these overheads with utilities and blah, blah, blah. And they start saying, boy, I need this crazy amount of money and my own business. And, and that's overwhelming. And it's all on me. Well, what if they had essentially sublet part of their uh, part of their uh, rooms to other practitioners? It, it, the analogy, I would say, is like owning a home. And saying I've got to cover all the costs of the home and the upkeep, but wait a second, what if I rent out Airbnb two or three of my bedrooms? I got a four bedroom home. I love it. I want to have a family one day. I want it. I want to fill this up, but I don't have the the capital wherewithal. But instead of now having this big monthly payment and nut to cover by renting out the space, I do fray all those costs. So I think the calculus is way different in terms of the risk they have to take if they're willing to use a platform that lets them monetize some of that excess space. In fact, that's the way I've described uh, Van Sanity. It takes medically appropriate, not Van Sanity, sorry, Cloud Med Spas. Uh, it takes medically appropriate uh, space. It allows you to monetize it for and with uh, aesthetic providers. Mm. So what are some of the things um, just to practically if people are going to be subleasing um, that they need to be talking to the landlord about what kind of extra insurance they need to look at? How do they need to like make sure the people coming into their space um, follow HIPAA, um, you know, mm-hmm. all of those things that, you know, if, if you have sensitive client information, you know, what are some of those things that a therapist needs to think through before they would allow you know people to sublease some of their space? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. So. Uh, first thing I would do is work with a provider like us or someone else who's you know walked this path a bunch of times. So you're not recreating the wheel. But aside from that, I, I think that what you need to be saying is let's structure the business. First of all, if you are leasing and say you have a five or seven year lease with the landlord, my guess is you have some kind of sublet capability that's not unreasonably withheld. Uh, that's it. That's standard in most contracts. You have to check that. But beyond that, uh, in our model, you don't actually uh, have any legal responsibility because you don't know the patient's name. That you you know you've you've let out room three to uh, uh, Nurse uh, Jane, and Nurse Jane is dealing with her own clients. She has her own electronic medical records. She has her own medical director, her own insurance. As long as none of your employees, and in this case, the answer is clearly no are doing things in those spaces that are renting, you don't have the information. You don't have HIPAA. You have no uh, uh, private information uh, of, of, these, of the renter's cl- uh, in- clients or renter's patients. You are, in many ways, like, uh, uh, like uh, Airbnb, you are just a landlord. And that's legally the way it's, uh, it's approached in uh, virtually every state. 
Again, mm-hmm. it has to do with access to information, uh, with understanding the procedures. And if you are not party to those, then you're you're in the clear. Mm. What are things that people can do to prep for for this sort of thing? If they're going to be subleasing part of their office, um, what can they be doing now before they you know, have people coming in? Yeah, no, I I think I think what I found is is uh, making it um, feel somewhere I'd say halfway between a four season spa and uh, and a hospital. So it has to have the you know the attributes of cleanliness and sterile that people feel that this is a clean space, um, that this is a place that, uh, that, that there's no, uh, there's no apparent, uh, you know, bacteria, disease, anything is, is, is there, that this is a really clean, sterile space. And yet at the same time has some touches of warmth, whether that's the style of the chair or, or some, you know, some accoutrement in the room, some, you know, soft lighting, patient, uh, soft paintings, um, maybe some, you know, uh, music, you know, something that adds a touch of warmth, the colors on the walls, something that, that gives a little bit of warmth, but it says, you know, it's warm, it's inviting, yet it's really clean and sterile. Mm, love that. You know, the last question I always ask is, if every private practitioner in the world were listening right now, what would you want them to know? Yeah, that would be along the lines of this this rental thing um, that we discussed earlier. But it was, I believe, it's a twenty year trend. I, I, I and it, it ties right in to um, what we were discussing before in terms of uh, people having uh, the ability to just, you know, be a, a participant on the employer side and just saying. Hey, I I don't need to be your boss. You can be your own entrepreneur, rent space, and and your business is going to be as good as it can be. It's an Amazon marketplace. You're gonna the the, the really talented ones who will win. Um, and then on the gig side, it's like take that leap. Uh, flexibility is a wildly underappreciated uh, part of uh, of your life, and you know a lot of people. That's why they're rejecting nine to five. There is one of the things, not a trend, but I want to mention, and I know you you have a lot of uh, therapists uh, as listeners. You know, we have just recently um, gotten into the weight loss drugs, uh, these GLP ones, and we have a program. And I'm not going to prop the program. I'm more excited about the drugs themselves. We certainly have a program. Happy to talk about, but that's not what I want to discuss here. What I want to discuss is how it's changing people's lives the patients. It's incredible. It's not just the weight loss, uh, you know, and the diabetes, but we're, they're starting to show um, effects with substance abuse, with alcoholism, with smoking, with heroin, uh, with just about any um, addiction. Uh, I've even read some pieces, these are preliminary on gambling. And, And that can really just I think completely changed people's lives. I mean, you read Oprah talking about it. she, and it, it helps them psychologically. She she's talked about it openly. I think about you know her weight loss and and uh, fat shaming and all that kind of stuff. And you know this takes that away. All of a sudden, it says, "Hey, it's not you. You're not a bad person. You aren't um, weak because you're heavy or because you smoke or because you drink or whatever." It's probably just something about your biology that we can hopefully help. Mm, such great points. If people want to connect with you, hear more about the program, uh, what's the best place to send them? Yeah, I'll give them both. My my uh, email is Iggy, I-G-G-Y, at cloudmedspas, plural, dot com. And they can absolutely reach me by phone. I always like to talk to people. Uh, you could text me first, maybe, so I'll answer because sometimes I get bad numbers I don't recognize, I won't answer, but it's 415-613-2640. And I, I'd love to hear from people and see if I can help. Mm-hmm. So great. Thank you so much, Izzy, for being on the show. All right. Thanks. I said Izzy, it's Iggy. My my uh, my partner's dog's name is Izzy, so I must have uh, that on my mind. So Iggy, thank you for being on the show. <laughs> All right. Thanks.
we all fumble and you know doing that at the end of the show i could have edited that out but why you know uh iggy's a good guy that um i'm, I'm sure that that has happened to all of us where we just make mistakes so um you know as, as we uh kind of close out the first quarter of the year already uh i want you to think about what are you doing to get to that next level uh who are you surrounding yourself with those goals that you had at the beginning of the year how are those going um those new habits um maybe it's now a time to recalibrate to say you know what i really i, I fell off the wagon i'm not doing what i need to do for my practice and uh you know i want to start a group practice i want to grow um next week memberships open so make sure that you head on over to practice of the practice.com forward slash level up um that's where all of our webinars this week are happening where you can register for those um we have some panels that have people that um, started private practices, started group practices, our in-group practice, and we have training specific around uh, kind of making sure that summer slump doesn't happen around marketing. So make sure you register for those um, and join one of our communities. Our communities are here to be supportive networks that can help you get to that next level. Whether you're in solo practice, starting group practice, or leveling up even into a mega group practice, we have a community for you. Uh, so make sure you check that out over at practicethepractice.com forward slash level up. And we could not do the show without our amazing sponsors. Therapy Notes is the best electronic health records out there. Uh, they will help you transition from whatever EHR you have right now. They'll help you be able to get organized, uh, to automatically do your billing um, for insurances, all of that. Um, they also offer teletherapy just as part of every plan that they have. Uh, so you don't have to worry about getting a HIPAA secure teletherapy platform that's included with Therapy Notes. So head on over to therapynotes.com. Use promo code Joe at checkout to get some extra months for free. Also, then they know that this marketing money is working uh, and that you found them through us. So thank you so much for listening to the Practice Practice podcast. Thanks for letting me into your ears and into your brain. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Special thanks to the band Silence is Sexy for that intro music. And this podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regard to the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, the producers, the publishers, or guests are rendering legal, accounting, clinical, or other professional information. If you want a professional, you should find one. <laughs>